The Alabama law has sparked new intensity in the fight for life in America. The Catholic Church has been leading the battle to protect inf infants in the womb from a horrible death by abortion. Archbishop Thomas Rohde is the head of the Archdiocese of Mobile, Alabama, and he joins us now. Archbishop Rohde, thank you for being here. You support the Alabama law because, as you said, life is worth protecting. Lawmakers have said their strategy is to get the law before the Supreme Court and with a new conservative majority of justices overturn Roe v. Wade. What do you think about that, Archbishop? Well, you know, I think the people of Alabama, not just Catholics, this has been a very broad-based effort. Even the, uh, the, the vote in the state Senate, 26 to 5, shows it's a broad-based effort. Catholics in Alabama, only 4%. A and the effort is to try to call our country back to respect for life. So this uh, law is obviously going to be challenged in courts, and it's probably going to work its way up to the Supreme Court. Whatever happens to the Supreme Court, the struggle is going to go on beyond that, because even if uh, Roe versus Wade is re-examined, it, the, le the legislatures in the state are where the effort's going to go next to try to per persuade uh, lawmakers to respect life. Now, like you said, Archbishop, Catholics only account for a small percentage of Alabama's population. The effort to enact the law was broad-based. Is the grassroots pro-life movement growing there? I think it is. It's certainly strong as was shown by this vote in the state legislature. We've spoken to some passionate pro-life advocates that worry the law goes too far because it eliminates the exemptions for rape, incest, and mother's health. And that could cause backlash. And we have President Trump, he's another supporter of life, who is for abortion exemptions. What does the church teach about any exemptions that would permit an abortion? And are you concerned about a possible backlash? Well, that's a political consideration of a backlash, and I leave that for others. But every human life is precious, and that's the teaching of the church. Innocent life is to be protected. And we don't, uh, we don't make something, uh, we don't correct something that's wrong by doing another thing that's wrong. Uh, rape, incest are horrible things, but if a life develops from that. That's an innocent human life, and we're, we're called to respect that life. Now, from Alabama to New York, our governor here, Andrew Cuomo, forced an extreme abortion bill through the state legislature early the, earlier this year. The harsh law eradicates virtually all restrictions on abortion, even up to the moment of birth. When you look at what Governor Cuomo has done, what is your reaction when he proclaims his Catholic faith? Well, he's certainly not showing uh, any adherence to the Catholic teaching of the respect for innocent life. And I, I think his uh, action in New York has energized people across the country who want to respect the, the right of, of life. And Archbishop Brody, my last question is, where is the future of this pro-life movement going? I think it's going to move forward. And I, I think the ultimate victory is always with the truth. Abortion is based upon uh, lies, it's based upon evil. I see among our young people more and more an awareness of what abortion is and their willingness to witness and stand up for the right for life. I think the pro-life movement is getting stronger and it's moving forward. With our young people. All right, Archbishop Brody, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you.